In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the Choice Filter web part. This web part allows users to filter data displayed on a page by selecting a value from a predefined list of choices that you provide. In this demonstration, we will be working with the sales page. This page has two web parts with lists of information pertaining to the products, the sales reports library, and a product complaints list. All items for all products display in these lists. By adding the choice filter to the page, a user can select a product from the filter web part and the lists are automatically filtered to only show items pertaining to the selected product. For this to work, the list being filtered must contain a column with the product names in it. That way, when a product name is selected from the filter, it has something to match it to in the list. Both of these lists have a column for product name. To show you, I'll open the product complaints list. Here you see the product column identifying which product each complaint relates to. I'll open one of these product complaint items. Here is the field identifying the product for the complaint, which is a choice column providing a list of all the products to select from. Now I'll open the sales reports library, which I can open from the quick launch here. And this also has a product column identifying which product a report relates to. If I view the properties for one of these documents, I see the product name associated to the report is selected from a choice list, just as in the product complaints list. There are three steps to using a filter web part. Step one, Add the choice filter web part to the web page. Step two, configure the filter settings, such as providing the list of choices for the filter. And step three, connect the filter web part to the other web parts on the page that it will be filtering. So let's get started with the first step, which is to add the choice filter web part to the page. So click on the page tab, edit page. Then I'll click the link, add a web part. In the web part categories, this is a filter category, and the choice filter is the web part, and then I'll choose add. The new web part is added to the top of the web part zone, and I'm going to reposition this and move this between the main title and the sales reports web part. You can place this web part anywhere on the page. It does not have to be in the same zone or directly above the web part list it will be filtering. The second step is to configure the filter web part. To do that, click the link in the web part labeled Open the Tool Pane. And the tool pane opens on the right side of the screen. This box is where we want to enter all of the product names, providing the list of choices for the users to select from. You can manually type in the choices, or as we just saw, the list of products were already provided in the sales reports and product complaints list. I'm going to cheat here and copy the list of product names from one of those lists and paste them here. So for now, I'm going to cancel from this tool pane. And I'm going to copy the list of products from the product complaints list. They were entered for this product choice column. So I need to go to the list tab and go to list settings. Open the settings for the product column and all the products are provided here in this box, so I'll just copy these. And then I'll return back to the sales page. To continue working with the filter web part, I have to go back to edit mode for the page. And again, for the choice filter, I click on open the tool pane. And then in the box where the choices go, I'll delete the sample choices and then paste in the choices I just copied. So there's all the product names. And then I'll go to the bottom of the tool pane and select OK to save the settings. So now we are ready for step three, which is to make the connection between the choice filter web part and the list web parts it will be filtering. I'll first connect to the sales reports list. You'll notice in the filter web part, it's letting us know the filter is not yet connected. So I click the plus next to that message. 
and it provides instructions to make that connection, which is to click the drop down menu for the web part, choose connections, and then choose send filter values to, and then select the web part list that I will be filtering, which is the sales reports list. And this choose connection dialog box displays. And there are two steps as indicated by the tab. And in this first step, we choose a connection type. And we just leave that at the default selection, get filter values from. Then click the configure button. In the second step, we need to choose which field in sales reports contains the values to filter on, which is product. So I'll click the drop down here. And all of the fields you can filter on for the library display, such as document name or who it was last modified by. We want to select product. And then I'll click the finish button. And notice this message was added to the filter web part indicating the connection to the sales reports list. So now we are ready to use the filter web part. So I'll exit from the editing mode. So I'll click on stop editing. And then browse to get rid of the ribbon. And now that this choice filter web part has been configured, it displays on the page. To use it, we'll click on the filter button. And the list of products that we had supplied display in the list to select from. So I'll select a product here and then choose OK. And now the filter has been applied and I only see those reports for this product copy paper 32 pounds. So this is just a temporary filter. If I go to another area of the site and return to the sales site, the complete list of all reports for all products displays. So now I'll filter on another product. So I click the filter button and I'll select the product here and then OK to filter. Now if for some reason I wanted to remove the filter and display the entire list without having to navigate away from the page as I just did, there is another option we can select in the filter web part settings. So return to edit mode for the page and then edit the web part by clicking on the web part menu, choose edit web part, the tool pane will display on the right. And for this option, I want to go into the advanced filter options and then select show empty value. And this will be added to the filter list to remove the previous filter. So I'll go to the bottom of the tool pane here and choose OK to save. And then I'll get out of the edit mode here. So again, I'll select a product to filter on. And now to remove that filter, I click the filter button. This new option has been added called empty. I'll select that, choose OK, and this will redisplays all of the items in the list. So our last thing that we still need to do is to add a connection between the choice filter and the product complaints list. So we'll just be repeating the same steps we did for connecting to the sales reports list. I go into edit mode of the page. Then go to the web part menu for the choice filter, select connections, send filter values to, and this time I'll select product complaints. Again, the connection type is get filter values from, choose configure. And in the second step here is where we choose the column in the product complaints list that contains those product names. So click the drop down and select product. And click finish. So then we can choose to stop editing, browse to clear the ribbon. So now when I select a filter from the list, both the sales reports and the product complaints list should filter. So I'll choose the inkjet 24 pound, choose OK. You see the filter was applied to the reports as well as to the complaints list. And to redisplay all items in both of these lists, I go back to the filter drop down button, select empty, and then choose OK. That removes any filter, and I'm back to seeing all items for both lists. 
So here we have seen an example of how the choice filter allows users to quickly filter and focus on specific data presented on a web page.